Welcome to another episode of Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman. Today I'm going to show you how to change one of your dash lights. Uh, this was an impromptu fix for me. I got in my uh, truck and noticed that the uh, light that shows that I'm in drive is burned out. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you the reverse process because I've already taken everything apart and gotten to the bulb. Here's the bulb right here. Tiny little bulb right here. This came out of the dash. Coming into the truck and the, the lamp came out of here. So if you can see the drive is right here and if I go down following it, it follows down this way and then you basically just twist it counterclockwise the spots right there so I just twisted it counterclockwise a quarter turn and it popped right out and what I'll do is I'll show you how I got everything apart uh, in, a, in a reverse procedure like I mentioned so you'll see how I got at everything so I can get to the dash lights okay back from the parts store uh, I have a Toyota dealership really close to my house and it looks like most of the bulbs uh, for the dash lights are the same bulb there are a couple different ones and just to make sure which bulb that you're replacing is the right one, you'd want to go to, to the Toyota dealership uh, or look online and find the right bulb for the, for the light you're talking about. But like I said, most of them are this, this number, 83120-60020. Okay. Another thing the, the guy at the dealership showed me is that these bulbs pull out of the little... Uh, clip or whatever you call it, the little uh, receptor that it hold, holds in. And when I asked them if they sell the bulbs separate, um, they said that this is the way they sell them. They sell them complete with the little uh, receptacle. So uh, these were like uh, seven, seven twenty-five a piece. Okay, I'm back in the truck. Here you can see I got the dash out. And uh, what I did in order to be able to pull the instrument panel out is I had to take the tilt wheel and put it all the way to the, the furthest bottom position because when I first tried to pull this out I was struggling with it and then I realized oh if I tilt the wheel down I can get it out easier and that, that was the ticket so I'm going now underneath here and I'm using a needle nose pliers to get a little bit of a grip on it and then slipping on me a little bit here Okay, I think it might be easier just to get it in with your hand. So it's barely, it's not even a quarter turn, it's like an eighth of a turn. So put it in a little bit, like I'm an eighth of a turn from being square with the other ones. And now I'm just twisting it back into place to where now it's in line with the other ones. Now that I got the bulb back in, I'm just going to push the dash instrument panel back in place and there's four four Phillips head screws that hold it in there's one two three four okay so reversing my my procedure I got the four screws back in that hold the uh, instrument panel back in, so this is secure now. I got this panel piece here. You have to uh, get these connectors right here, this uh, blue and uh, beige connectors in through here. This is for the uh, alarm, alarm light right here. And then you also have your uh, dimmer switch right here. This is the dimmer switch coming through.
Okay, I've got it back in place. Took a little bit of finagling around. What I'm doing right here is I'm putting the little uh, lock nut on the uh, dimmer switch. You got to take this off to pull this uh, decorative piece or whatever you want to call it off. So this was a 12 millimeter. Just tightening that lightly, kind of holding the back side so it doesn't the connector doesn't twist. The next thing I'm going to do is there's these two connectors right here, and I struggled with these. I don't know why, but to get them apart, but they're color coded. They're you can see that they're blue and like a beige, and I think to get them un unclipped is you uh, put a little screwdriver in from the front to, to get it disconnected. Let me see if I could get this light to where you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to snap them back together. There we go, there's one. The lighting's good right there. There we go. Too. So like I was saying, I think it's better to come in from the front to, to get the connector off. But I, like I said, I this is the hardest part for me is getting these two connectors for the uh, for the alarm system undone. Okay, so the next thing now that uh, I've got the dimmer switch connected, I've got the two electrical connections there. Before I screw all this back together, I'm going to just see... If when I put it in drive, the dash light works. I got the negative cable off the off the battery right now, and I don't have any other unconnected electrical connections. So I feel confident that if I disconnect or reconnect the battery, I can check it before putting everything back together to make sure the bulb works. Okay, got the the truck on, and it works. You can see now. Before I didn't have a a drive light working, but now it works. Success. Okay, now that I've checked to make sure my bulb works, there's uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the four Phillips head screws that hold this piece onto the dashboard. So there's there's number one right here. This little tab goes to back here. Number two is right here. It actually has this like this little plastic dowel that it slips over to give you, uh, you know, make it easier for you to find the screw hole. And then number three is up here at the upper part, and number four is right here where my finger is pointing. Those two Phillips head screws. So there's another four that secures this plastic piece to the dash. I wanted to share with you a handy tool that I uh, use for this job. It's uh, it's made by Chapman Manufacturing. It's a uh, American company, which is nice, and it's a little uh, ratchet drive for uh, different heads. This is actually a kit that's for Japanese uh, motorcycles. It's a nice compact kit with uh, an extension with a quarter inch drive, the ratchet head. You've got Phillips, you've got um, Allen heads, you've got Torx heads, you've got flathead screwdrivers, and you've got a little adapter here for uh, quarter inch drive uh, sockets. And then you've got a little speed wheel there that you could spin uh, nuts out really easy. So I used it for this application. Instead of trying to get a screwdriver in there with these upper ones, you're able to get them in a lot easier. Unless, you know, you could get a shorty screwdriver too, but this is just a nice tool to have to get into tight places. So now I've got this decorative piece or whatever you want to call it back in place with the four bolts, four screws. There's one here, again, two up there, and then the one down here, this little tab. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this uh, kick plate or whatever. It has the uh, 
it still has the hood release and the uh, release for the uh, the gas uh, the gas fill hatch still connected. I suppose you could disconnect these without a problem, but since it wasn't too much in my way, I just kept it attached and folded it down onto the uh, floorboard. So I'm going to get that hooked up next. Hopefully you can see this, but I'm basically lining up this um, heater vent and uh, when I line up that heater vent in, uh, with the uh, with the vent on the uh, plastic piece here then I just tilt it in place and it seems to line up pretty good one piece I forgot is uh, this piece that goes over the ignition it just pops out with tabs it's got these two tabs that go pop in here and here so you just when I uh, first removed this bottom piece here then I just grabbed it and pulled it out there was nothing nothing holding it and of course it's fighting me there we go now that's popped in. Now I could get the bottom piece in. Here we go. It looks like it's in pretty good. Now this was held with um, four 10, mi mi 10 millimeter bolts. So if you got one here, Another one there. You've got one here and you got another right there. So four 10 millimeter bolts hold this bottom piece in. Okay, I've got all the bolts in place. I'm just gonna tighten them up with a 3H drive and a 10 millimeter socket with an extension. Not putting a whole lot of force only holding a plastic piece it doesn't have to be cranked on that tight so choke up on your wrench and don't over tighten it and strip something out okay those are all tight dimmer works and the light works 